now, and we won't be winning forever. Uh, but uh, it was good to see everyone here today, and uh, we're here, of course, for Emily's memorial service. And so let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer, and then we're going to sing a song. And I'm going to give you all a warning, too, to let you know what we're planning to do here. Uh, after a little bit, we're going to do some testimonies. And when I say testimonies, it's, it's all volunteer. If you'd like to uh, relay a, a story or something that you remember about Emily, uh, we're going to let you do that. And so give you, and it might be one person, it might be everybody. I don't know. We just have to uh, see how that goes. I'm not going to force anybody. But if you'd like to maybe give a little uh, remembrance of, of Emily to you or something that you and her did or whatever it might be, uh, we'll let you give that, uh, have that little time here after uh, just a bit, and I'll, I'll let you know about that. And Jim will get us started on that because he's got some things that he's going to, to read as well. He's got his little uh, Braille thing that he brought with him today, and it's pretty fancy looking little deal there. And uh, he's going to be able to read some stuff for us, and he'll be so he'll get started on the testimony time. But after his turn, uh, then we'll open it up to everybody else. And so, but let me open with a word of prayer, and then we'll we'll get started. After that, we'll sing a song, "Fill My Way with Love." So let's pray, Heavenly Father. We we thank you for today. We do thank you for the opportunity that we have to remember Emily. Uh, Lord, we thank you for her and for her. Uh, sweet spirit that she always had here at church and uh, we thank you for her uh, being a part of us and being a part of, of us uh, having a, a, an enjoyable time as we came to church and we thank you for her uh, Lord we do miss her uh, it's it's a it's a normal thing to miss people as, as they passed on from this world and so Lord we we do miss her but uh, we thank you for uh, being able to know her and, and being able to uh, uh, get to know her more and more every Sunday. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity now as we, we uh, have this memorial service. We pray for Jim and, and uh, pray that you would continue to encourage and strengthen him. We know as he's, as he's missing uh, Emily, which is a very, again, very normal thing. Uh, we pray for him and for the whole family that you might encourage and strengthen them uh, at their time of loss. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity now. We pray your blessing on, on this service in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I need to get my hymnal here. And Jim is kind of doing double duty or triple duty maybe today as he's obviously playing the piano for us since he's our pianist. Uh, it's either him or me, and, and trust me, he's a lot better than me. That's not much of a contest there. Uh, but we're going to start with number 179. We're going to sing a couple songs today, uh, some of the ones that Jim said that Emily really liked. And the first one is 179, 179, Fill My Way With Love. Fill My Way With Love, 179. It's got three verses.
website. Some of you maybe have already had a chance to, to read it. Maybe some of you haven't, but uh, I'll read it here for you. Emily Margaret Paris, April 5th, 1949 to November 7th, 2020. The most important thing that can be said about Emily was that she was a writer. Writing was a core part of her being. She was a poet who wrote at least 2,200 poems. <laughs> she also wrote at least one short story, many personal letters, and much more. Emily began as a poet by writing a love poem for her mom for Mother's Day. Emily was universally said to be kind, considerate, and a bright light in our world. Emily was born on April 5, 1949 at Truman Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri. Her parents were Frances Nichols and Derek Bennett. Emily spent her childhood in Kansas City. She went to school at East High School where she enjoyed choir and many clubs such as Glee and Spanish. She was involved with Youth for Christ where she did volunteer work for nursing homes and hospitals. These activities gave Emily a lifelong interest in people and helping the community. Emily attended UMKC for two years. She joined her brother Charles in both the language and drama departments where she helped with audio and visual effects. She found university life difficult and moved on to other pursuits and endeavors. After college, she and her brother made a move to California where she had a son, Peter. Emily became an adventurous wanderer between California and Missouri for a number of years. She also lived in Colorado and Alabama for brief <laughs> periods of time. But after 1990, Emily moved back to Missouri where she stayed for the remainder of her years. Emily had one older brother, Charles, with whom she had a special and close relationship. She often lived with him in the various places mentioned above. Emily had a life, excuse me, a long time passion for the music and causes of singer songwriter John Denver. She created the first online John Denver fan club in 1994. Emily taught herself a highly advanced computer language in order to create that website. Her newsletter continues to flourish today with 8,000 subscribers. She often highlights the poetry and words of her fellow John Denver fans. Emily's tenacity and ingenuity allowed her to pursue many interests, excuse me, many interesting endeavors. She operated her own popular typing service in Kansas City. She typed 80 words a minute, which made her sought after. Emily also was involved in the trading of antiques, such as dolls. Little Lulu comics and stuffed animals. In her early days, she placed her poetry in books that she created herself. However, in the last few years, she learned how to use Kindle Direct Publishing to place her self published books online for sale. Emily had a plethora of hobbies, including collecting salt and pepper shakers, Eiffel Towers, eagles, and postcards. Emily absolutely loved dinosaurs. She tore through books, articles, and many other, many other stuffed and collectible dinosaurs. She also found time to turn her passion for stuffed animals into a passion for helping others. Emily contributed to an organiz organization called SAFE, Stuffed Animals for Emergencies. This was near and dear to her heart and provided toys for hundreds of children in need of comfort. She also loved swimming, spending hours at local pools and water parks. She and her husband went on many trips to Branson, Missouri. Emily had many misadventures, <laughs> such as needing her son to bail her out of jail, filling her car with confetti for the 1985 World Series, and writing out a check signed Emily M. Pizza. She was also pulled over by police for both laughing and crying. Fortunately, she was not given a ticket for either incident. 
This really shows her lighthearted nature and desire not to live a conventional life. Emily lived her life to the fullest. There was no one who could keep her from doing what she enjoyed. Emily met her husband, Jim Fettgather, in 1984. They have enjoyed 35 years of love and friendship together. The family asked that contributions be made in Emily's name to Emily's List, which was an organization she cared about deeply. Emily created a, a variety of websites reflecting her passions. Rocky Mountain High Fan Club page, up since 1994. Emily's Dinosaur Park page, and Emily, Emily's books available on Amazon. Next, I'm going to read some scripture. <coughs> one passage that is very familiar to us. The first one I'm going to read is Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then another passage from the Gospel of John. When talking with uh, Jim about the service today, uh, I asked him if he knew of any favorite passages that that Emily had that I could maybe read. And he said, well, she just liked the book of John, the Gospel of John, and uh, enjoyed being able to, as we went over the Gospel of John in church, and enjoyed especially the, uh, the <clears throat> miracles of Jesus. And so uh, I'm just going to read a passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, and uh, a well-known passage to many people, John 14, 1 through 6. Jesus is speaking here, and he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. At this time, we're going to have the testimonies, and Jim's going to start off, and he's going to come. You're going to come up here to the pulpit now, right, Jim? You want me to get your thing and, and just, oh, yes, just, just have, I'll just help you up here. Okay. Just, just step right there, and then a little further, and here's the edge of the pulpit, All right. and I'll get your thing, and you can do what you do. I have no idea. I'm just going to put this right here. All right, this is great. Thank you. Well, as was mentioned earlier, um, Emily did write over 2,000 poems, so um, it was really difficult uh, to think of a poem that would be the best for, for today's service, but she's written one that I would like to read called Gems. It's called Gems. It was written some 30 years ago, and it starts out, Gems of the universe we are seeking to find that formerly were, were hidden within our own mind. Gems we are hoping to loose and unbind so the spirit within 
we can seek and find. Treasures are hidden and locked deep inside. He'll open the door and in them will abide. Treasures of wisdom, a pearl of great price, is what you will find if you take this advice. For a storehouse of riches is locked away, but it will come out if you just learn the way. Happiness abound can all be yours if you learn to abide on these peaceful shores. Jewels of wisdom beyond your best dream will come to the surface in a beautiful stream of radiant joy and of abundant love. And it all is coming from heaven above. <clears throat> now, the next thing that I would like to read briefly, uh, Emily had a lot of internet friends, and the longest, uh, the longest lasting internet relationship was from a wonderful gentleman in the UK. And his name was Steve. Donahue, and they met online in 1994. So this is Steve's response uh, after he had learned um, about what had happened to Emily. <clears throat> he had written back to me and said, Emily was a true friend, a common, a common love of the music of John Denver led me to asking a question on the internet. Emily answered that question 26 years ago, and the rest, as they say, is history. Although we never met over the 26 years, we corresponded, we got to know each other very well. We shared our lives via email, the good and the bad, the tears of joy, tears of sadness, plus everything in between. Emily was a great storyteller. She could make crossing the road sound interesting. And it was her observations and descriptive narrative on all aspects of her life that always made each email that I received a joy to read. We discussed everything from the price of house insurance to the price of coffee beans. We particularly liked the differences in our two societies um, you say vacation and stove, we say holidays and boilers. I was particularly jealous of the long, hot Missouri summers, something I am reminded, or rather bemused Emily about every year, as the days started to get longer and hotter. Uh, in my part of the world, the worst Kansas City summer uh, is better than the best Newcastle day. Emily used to always say, you British, you like to talk about the weather. And I replied, that's because we don't have any. <laughs> so through the distance of 4,173 miles between us and six hours time difference, it was like nothing at all. Whenever, whenever I read Emily's emails, I was right there. Her words created the scene and I stood virtually beside her. I now face a world where I won't be able to read any other emails from Emily. A lot, a loss I cannot describe accurately. It's okay. How sad it makes me. Even so. <clears throat> Even so, it's nothing compared to the loss that uh, Pete West and Jim have come to terms with. All I can say is the better place that Emily is going and has gone to shall sure keep the angel busy, pencing her notepad and pencil <laughs> to write about all those new poems and stories that she is so good at. Thanks to you, Emily, for being a wonderful friend. Uh, you've brought more joy than I will ever know.
in my life. I'll miss you, but I'll always remember you. An email with love. And that's from Steve in the UK, who is a very wonderful virtual online friend for a quarter of a century. Thanks for uh, letting me read that. Thank you. Very good. Now we got a little bit further. Right there. You want me to set this on the front view? Go farther. Here's the piano. Okay, so Jim got us started off with the testimonies, and that was very good. Who would like to be next to maybe give a story or some remembrance about Emily? Uh, just kind of raise your hand and then stand up so we can hear you the best we can. Anybody? Yeah, go ahead, Gene. Well, it was always a pleasure to see her because she always had a smile on her face. Yep. And she always reached out hand, that hand to shake your hand. And uh, I miss her very much. She was a, she was a wonderful person. And uh, God bless her. And God bless Jim. He's done such a wonderful job. And he does such a wonderful job to, with Morris Baptist Chapel playing the piano. Uh, we love him very much. I love Emily very much. Amen. <clears throat> You, you go ahead, huh? Will you? Yeah. Picture B. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I got to know Jim and Emily at St. Elizabeth's uh, Catholic Church, and, and Emily is a wonderful cook. And I would send uh, a variety of people over to her home, and she had at least four dinners. We met once a month, and Jim and Emily were always fun to have, and I took full advantage of Jim. I would have a party in one house and a party across the street. And after we ate, we'd all go to the second house. I'd take Jim and put him in front of the piano. And we had some very good singers. And Jim would play and it is fun when you have you know, someone who knows very complicated songs, complicated verses, sings beautifully, and Jim entertaining us. And I'll always remember Jim and Emily liked to come to my house for chief's parties. And when we had the uh, Super Bowl party, Emily and I and this lady friend, Molly, there were 10 people in the family room 10 people in the living room and we got up and we did a boom shaka laka laka boom <laughs> shaka laka and we were kicking like we were the rockets now and here we are all over 69 you know and so we our kicks weren't too high but it was simply genuine fun to be around Jim and Emily and um, you know we would go out to eat my husband and I with Jim and Emily and they love fine dining and they we would go to places that and have oysters on the half shell and and uh, New Orleans food and they were always up for joining us and so we're going to work real hard at keeping Jim entertained <laughs> thank you very much thank you Andrea I saw your hand I just wanted to say that when I, you know, if I have to wrap in, we all have one word I'd say tenacity. Because, you know, there wasn't anything she wouldn't try or anything she wasn't, you know, always doing. And, you know, they were always uh, gone to a, some sort of outdoor event, uh, soaking up every bit of sunshine and music that they could get. And I can only imagine for Emily how it is for her beyond uh, over yonder. And um, I remember about six years ago, her health was uh, very compromised for her, her heart. 
And she was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to have anything done. And we're like, Emily, you're going to have to, you know, and I remember helping Jim convince her. He's like, you have to help me. You have to tell her that she has to do the surgery. You know, she had like a 50, 50 chance if she didn't of living. And I'm telling you what the last, I spent probably more time around Emily the last six or eight years after that surgery. And she came back from that surgery on oxygen and uh, barely able to walk or get anywhere. And I'm telling you, it didn't slow her down hardly at all. I mean, she was always, you know, and, and you could just watch her. The more she exercised, the more places she went, the better she got and, and all that. And, you know, before you know it, I mean, she was just back. And, you know, I just thank God for the last years that Jim was able to, you know, be with her and extend, you know, her life to make all our lives better. And we love Emily. Uh, I remember one time, uh, oh, I don't know, several years ago that Jimmy and Emily and Andrea and myself went down to her childhood home. Oh. <laughs> now, they they weren't, Jimmy and Connor kind of wanted to avoid it, but I love that kind of stuff, and so is Emily. I'm a pack rat like she was. She loved to collect little things, and that full of her childhood memories. And I, you know, I'm the same way. And uh, she showed me where <clears throat> her father had built steps in a closet so they could go up to the second floor, make a second floor out of it. And they used as his bedrooms and that kind of stuff I just love. It was an old house. And we went all, me and her went all over that house. And she had a story about every room, the things that she did when she was growing up. And, how her dad would do this and do that, and I was, I, we, we went down to the basement, which was kind of treacherous, the stairs <laughs> weren't in the best of condition. We couldn't even get Jimmy to come in there. We, we sat out in the rain in the car, me and Jim did. But I enjoyed that so much, you know, just going through that old house and, and, and listening to her talk about her memories of growing up over there. And uh, in, in a way, I couldn't understand why she had she was such a sentimentalist like I am. I, I can see it. So, you know, that stuff she just wanted to hang on to as long as she could. And she did. <laughs> and even though Jimmy wasn't too wild about a lot of that. <laughs> I know where she's coming from. And when I leave this earth, Andrea will probably have to go through the same thing. I'll figure out how to get rid of all this. I'll have Jim to help me. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like with Emily, when you leave this earth, you're through with it. But while you're here, <laughs> like that. Okay, we, we really miss, we really miss her, you know. We're, and we're going to do all we can to help Jimmy. Okay. Anybody else? I just remember her. She was always so sweet, you know. And like you say, Jean said, she'd always shake your hand and, you know, smile. She always had a smile on her face. and. I just loved her. I mean, I wish we'd had a lot more years <laughs> with her, but I, I did love her. <laughs> okay. Any other brave souls? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we have one more song. Uh, page 133, I Feel Like Traveling On. <clears throat> has four verses, three, 133. <laughs> Thank you. 
to your sister. <laughs>